Planet Earth's ecosystems include humanity. And Planet Earth's ecosystems are dying. So we are dying too. Because we're measuring money instead of Modi. The life supporting capacity of ecosystems and everything else. I'm a chartered professional engineer and an academic. That's not unusual, but I am also Te Arawa. Ko Te Arawa tiwi, ko Ngāti piki ao te hapu. Ko Matafaura te maunga, ko te roto i te kite ai e ihenga te moana nui. Ko te puna whakarei a rāke ao tōku marae, ko wai heke tua te wā kāinga. Nō reira ngā mihi o ngā ahuatango tēnei wā kia koutou katoa, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. This combination of who I am and what I do creates tensions regarding what is real and what is not. I find myself in situations where science cannot explain what I'm experiencing. So I want to explain or share one of those experiences with you. It occurred about 26 years ago while I was doing some surveying for a land development in Kafia. So just close your eyes for a moment and reimagine it with me. It's a beautiful summer day. It's in the afternoon. I'm carrying a survey prism and staff and I'm gathering spot levels on gently rolling grass dunes. Kafia Harbour spreads to the horizon. There's no wind, there are no clouds, and the sun is warm on your skin. Suddenly, though, it feels as if you've stepped into a freezer. You can open your eyes. Now, if I was playing golf and I was getting a thrashing, um, that might be a welcome change and quite refreshing. But I wasn't playing golf. I wasn't tired. I wasn't dehydrated. I definitely wasn't experimenting with illegal substances. And it wasn't refreshing. The feeling I had was actually quite uncomfortable. I gave up trying to hold the prism steady. I moved out of the area, I gave it a wide berth, and then I continued taking survey spot levels because everything had returned to normal. Later on, once I packed away the gear, I went to a place, an appropriate place, and I cleansed myself spiritually. While I was there, an elder from the area approached me and asked if I was okay. He then explained that there was some history to that place that I'd been in. And centuries earlier, there had been trees there. And the function of those trees was that deceased ancestors would be suspended for such a time that the natural processes could cleanse their bones prior to burial. So was it a coincidence? I don't think so. Certainly I don't have the scientific understanding to explain what I experienced. I think though what I experienced was the Modi of that place. So I guess one thing this tells us about is it illustrates the limitations of our scientific reality. And even scientists will tell you that there's a lot that we do not know. 95% of matter is dark energy or dark matter, leaving only 1 20th or 5% that is ordinary matter. You and I, this stage, this building, the ground that we stand on. And even our ability to modify the physicality of our ecosystems is exceeded 
by our ignorance of the implications of those actions. So I think what we need is a different way of understanding what we do and how we do it. Some of the um, scientists are estimating or trying to understand these things by estimating uh, maximum sustainable yields and tipping points. The problem with these approaches, though, is that they tend to be more focused on monetary outcomes, on profit margins and the economics involved. Do you think it's wise to manage our ecosystems motivated by economic returns? I don't. And I think we need a new way of doing things. I think we should be measuring Modi. So I want you to just think about that for a moment. I've been thinking about it for a while. Ten years ago I published my first article on the Modi model and since then Tuminako and I, I'm not sure where Tuminako is sitting, um, and others, we've been on a very steep learning curve. So I want to share with you how we've been measuring Modi. But first I need to explain the concept of Modi. And it's as easy as falling off a log or jumping into a swimming pool. I'll start by talking about gravity. Hands up if you believe in gravity. 98, 99, 100, yes. Sure. We all believe in gravity, not because we can see, hear, smell, taste or touch it, but because it explains experiences and observations that we make all around us every day. But gravity was only really measured just over three centuries ago. And in simple terms, Gravity is the attractive force that affects all ordinary matter. Modi is an attractive force as well. It's the attractive force between the physical and the metaphysical, that other 95%. Or well, what part of that 95% combined with our physical selves enables life. The concept of Modi has been understood by indigenous peoples for millennia. And it can be described as a life force, a life principle, the life potential of everything in existence. Modi is in everything, and we can sense it. It explains things that we observe, such as life and death, our surroundings, and concepts such as sustainability and resilience. Now, to explain how to measure Modi, I first need to share with you a way of conceptualising our shared reality. And I say shared reality because the reality that we measure in must be inclusive of all people. The modi of the ecosystem represents environmental well-being. The modi of the community represents social well-being. The modi of the family or the individual, that represents economic well-being. And the modi of the hapu or indigenous peoples represents cultural well-being. Collectively, these four modi dimensions can define reality in a way that is inclusive of all knowledge systems. And each of these Modi dimensions is a force that we can enhance and diminish through our actions. And so these changes in Modi mean that, those, that it can be measured. To measure Modi, what we need to do first is identify some indicators that represent a particular dimension. And those indicators require thresholds. What we want to know is when the indicator Modi has been totally exhausted. 
that's one threshold. Another threshold is when there's no change in Modi. And the final threshold we need to understand is when the Modi is fully intact, fully restored. So once we have these three thresholds defined, we can start to assess situations, um, opportunities and decisions. What we do is we can score now based on our understanding of those thresholds. A score of zero means that there's no change. No change in the Modi is occurring, there's no impact. If it's not zero, then it's one of two things. It must be either being diminished or enhanced. And we have the threshold for totally exhausted, which scores minus two, and we have a threshold for fully restored, which scores plus two. If there is a change and it hasn't reached the threshold, then it scores a partial change in Modi, which is either negative one for a diminishing and positive one for an enhancing of Modi. Now this is quite a simplistic way of measuring Modi. But it clearly identifies what's going on. It gives us an absolute understanding of the implications of our actions and it clearly tells us if something is going to be sustainable or not. So with these analyses, we can create all sorts of wider understandings reflecting the uh, complexity of the systems that we're studying. And we can even measure Modi over time. By plotting Modi over time, we can work out areas, the swept area of the curve above the x-axis, and that represents an increase in the resilience of our ecosystems. Conversely though, a swept area below the x-axis, continuous diminishing of Modi represents reduced resilience and a reduced likelihood that we will survive on Earth. So I think we've got a choice. We continue to measure progress using money and spiral towards the tipping points and our ine inevitable de demise. Or we could measure the future in Modi. If enough of us care about the impact that we have upon our own Modi, upon the Modi of others and the Modi of our ecosystems, that's a start. If that cumulative understanding then influences the way decisions are being made, I think that's even better. And I think that we should expect to live. We should expect to survive. But not in some miserable context of scarcity, born out of greed and self-interest but in conditions of abundance born out of better decision making. So I think we've got a choice and we should be taking it. We need to be measuring Modi. Modi tu, Modi ora, kia matara, tēnā ratātou katoa.